Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We bless your name. We adore you. We glorify your name, Lord, tonight. We say thank you for your grace upon our lives. Thank you for the day that you have given us, Lord. Thank you for the blessing upon our lives. Thank you for your promises upon us, Lord. Thank you for the angelic hosts, Lord, around us. We bless your name tonight. I thank you for those that have been at work. Thank you for the blessing of our job. And Lord, we thank you for the protection. Thank you for our children that went to school and came back safely. Recently we had parents that lost children as a result of an accident when someone drove straight in a school. We do not take it for granted, Lord, we know. It is because of your protection that they went to school and they came back safely. We have also had children that have been kidnapped. But we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your angels have also been around our own children to protect them from any harm. Tonight, Lord, as we gather, as we worship you, Lord, I pray that you have your way and let your kingdom come. And let your will be done in our lives. Spirit of the living God, every time we come back to, to, in your presence, we come with the hearts of repentance. We come with a contrite heart. According to Psalms 51 from verse number 17, the Bible says that a broken and a contrite heart you will not despise. We come, Lord, with humbleness, with meekness, with broken and contrite hearts. And we ask that if whatever we have done, whatever we have done has grieved of the Holy Spirit, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, forgive us and cleanse us and purify us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The Bible says, when two or three people gather together, you dwell in their midst. For we know you are in our midst tonight, Lord, and we know that you can hearken unto our voice and answer us. Lord, into your hands, we commit all of families, both families that have connected for the very first time and the families that have been connecting all along. We cover ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus. Without you, Lord, there would be no reason for us to be here, some of us ministering and others listening. We have many other places we would have gone to, but we are here, Lord. We are here for you. We have gathered because we love you. Lord, it's my prayer, therefore, that you minister healing to those of our members that are not feeling well. Father, I cannot forget to pray for Mama Maria. I cannot forget to pray for our sister Rebecca. I cannot pray, forget to pray for all those that are both in hospitals. But some of them are home at bedridden. We pray for healing in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Send your angels, O Lord, to minister healing to your daughter to your son, to that wonderful family. There are those who have issues in their mouth, pains in their body, in joints, Lord. We pray for healing upon Prince Tyler. We pray for healing upon every one of us, some struggling with cold and cough. Lord, we pray for healing. This evening, Spirit of the Lord, we also continue to pray for those who don't have jobs. Father, this evening I cover them with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you give them profitable employment. Let someone get a job that will look after them and make them happy. That they will attend the church and have a reason to say, the Lord is good. Tonight I remember to pray for families, Lord. Relationships, courtships, and those who are dating. We pray for unity, we pray for love and oneness. We pray for the anointing to marry and to get along. We cover ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus and we cancel any spirit and every spirit of pride, arguments, fighting in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, we also pray for children. Children with single parents, single moms, single dads. Children that are sold into drugs and alcohol. Children that have not had enough guidance and they are self-destroying. We cover them with the blood of Jesus tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, tonight as we minister, it's my prayer and my petition that you have your way. Father, we also pray for men and women of God, servants of God at all levels, some on altars, some in family churches or house churches, some in our churches where we meet, Lord. I cover every minister, even members of Kingdom Love, pastors of Kingdom Love, Pastor Robert, Pastor Prosse, Pastor Robin and Mami, Pastor Scovy, and all other pastors that work with us, Lord. We cover them with the precious blood of Jesus. We pray that you provide for them, provide for their families, provide for their children, provide for their grandchildren in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We also pray for the anointing to stay together as ministers. Father, we pray for leaders, political leaders, community leaders, and leaders in all, level, in all places at all levels. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. And we pray for more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, I pray for our family, on the Utah family, people that connect from different countries. The time is not even the same, but they come to pray to seek the Lord. Father, bless them and use them to be fishers of men. Tonight, we also remember to pray for businesses. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters, both who are here and those who are not here, and even those who will access this message especially. Father, we pray that you bless the work of our hands. Bless our businesses with contracts, Lord. Bless our businesses, O Lord, Father, with faithful people that can work with us without duping and stealing and lying about our businesses. Send your angels that are in charge of promoting businesses to guide us on how to do so. Dear Holy Spirit, give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to do businesses the right way. We pray for those, my God, who are in the nations of the world. But they, don't, they are not born there. They are foreigners. Father, we pray for the grace to be established in the lands where we are. You did it with Joseph after he went through a lot. You established him in Egypt, where he was not born. You did it, Heavenly Father, with Moses, looked after in a palace, and yet he was not a royal. You did it with the Queen Esther and Mordecai, where you gave them an upper hand over their enemies in a foreign land. You did it to Abraham, where you prospered him in the land that you gave him. And you, needed, you did it with Isaac and Jacob, and they prospered away from their land. I pray to the God over asylum seekers, refugees, economic refugees, and all people that have let, left their countries to go abroad and look for green pastures. Father, we pray for that blessing. Many of us do not live in countries where we came from, and yet you know, Lord, we are here to make money and build ourselves and get established and build our ministries. I pray for a blessing that you reserved for foreigners, Lord, for people living abroad and not in their countries. We cover ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus and we pray against the spirit of infirmity. Infirmity is the spirit that causes sickness and disease, incurable diseases, Lord, a spirit that causes cancers, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure and strokes, and may, many other sicknesses. Lord, I pray that the angel of the Lord will encamp around us. Let the Holy Spirit hoover upon us. Let the healing power in the precious blood of Jesus be upon us and our families. Father, tonight we come to you, the judge of all. Isaiah called you, uh, in Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22, he says, You are our, our judge. You are our lawgiver. You are our king. You will save us. We run back to you, Lord. We run back to you, Lord. And into your hands, oh Lord, we commit all cases. Cases in all levels of courts, whether crown courts or civil courts, home office courts, Lord, whatever courts they are, immigration courts, whether revenue courts, Lord, we pray that you'd roll away the reproach and take away the accusations and the investigations, Lord, 
Father, I pray for that woman who is awaiting for a call to go to court. Even though she might say it's my fault. Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Lord, we cover that woman. We cover that man. We cover ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus. May you thwart the plans of the crafty. Many who are in prisons. Many who are being investigated. We know it's a conspiracy and a plan for the devil to throw them into prisons. Because he did, the devil did it with the fathers and mothers, our fathers and mothers. He did it with our elders. Lord, deliver me. Deliver us from all chains of being imprisoned. Deliver us from circles of evil and witchcraft. In the book of Acts of Apostles, the Bible says that the angel entered into a prison without even the guards knowing. Tonight, Lord, is my prayer. Send your angels that release, or those angels that release prisoners. We need to be released, Lord. Some of us are spiritual prisoners. Prisoners of witchcraft. Prisoners of poverty. Be released in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Prisoners of different circumstances. Prisoners of illiteracy. Where people try to study and nothing works. Lord, we pray for immediate release. Send your angels that are in charge of releasing people and setting them free. Lord, fracasses have been pronounced upon us. Some of them we know, others we don't know. If they are the ones standing in the way, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse around 15, the Bible says that you nailed all those accusations and curses and handwritings upon the cross tonight father we bring all these curses and written codes and covenants to the cross any agreement any vow any covenant or code that was done by our enemies or done by us with the people that don't glorify god we declare such now and void in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, Father, tonight we cover, we pray for our houses and households. Recently we saw a, a, a man that set up a blaze, a, 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 a house on fire, and he killed a mother and her children. Father, we pray that the angel of the Lord will encamp around us and never allow the enemy to triumph over us. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for more grace to seek your face. The first, the second, and the third day sometimes are okay, but the further we go, the enemy fights to make sure we don't fast. But Lord, I pray for more grace tonight, more grace upon your daughter, more grace upon your son to remain in your presence. Father, we are living in a generation that is full of immorality, sexual immorality, and all kinds of immorality. But we pray that you prevail, to preserve us and protect us. Protect our own children. We cover ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus. And we pray against every network of evil agents, satanic agents, that roam around, go around, even on online altars, even in churches that affect pastors' children, that affect uh, ministers' children, that affect children of believers. We cancel any plan of that and we render it powerless in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, tonight we pray against the spirit of rejection. We are, we are, we are favored and we have divine favor upon us. We refuse and reject rejection. Any rumors, any enchantment, any bewitchment, any power that is responsible for me being rejected, responsible for this woman and this man being rejected, responsible for the rejection upon our ministry, Lord, we command that spirit to fall down and die in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, tonight, I pray for those in South Africa. I pray for those in Uganda. I pray for those in the UK, in Europe, in the US, in the Middle East, 
We cover all of them with the precious blood of Jesus, especially members of the Utani family. Father, tonight I pray that you protect us from curses of our elder brothers. The curse that was pronounced upon Joseph and the evil plan against him was enough to destroy him if it had not been you that intervened. May you intervene in our situations, Lord. May you deliver us from biological brothers. May you deliver us from biological sisters. May you deliver us from those who are older than us, those that we share the same age, their age base, and those that we are older. Father, we saw Jephthah being oppressed by his own young brothers. Lord, deliver us. Someone say, Lord, deliver me and deliver my family. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for our altars. Altars are places where we gather, whether two or three, we gather and we meet you there. I pray for the Utah family altar and kingdom love and any other altar where your daughters and sons meet. Lord, we need more grace. We need more revival that your people may rejoice. According to Psalms 85 verse number 6, David prayed and said, Will you not revive us again, O Lord, that your people may rejoice? Father, I pray that you revive us again. And that your people rejoice. Tonight, Father, remember those people who used to do great, who used to serve, who used to give, who used to, to minister, but they have given up. Tonight, Father, into your hands we commit our brothers who have lost faith, who have walked away from the grace, who have given up on ministry. I pray for revival. Father, we can only pray for it. And then you will make it happen. Lord, revive that brother. Revive that sister. Revive our families, Lord. Our children used to go and worship. They don't want to anymore. There are more people that talk against church than people that talk positively about church. Lord, we pray that heaven will speak in this situation. We pray that the angels of the Lord will be sent out to drag everyone that is lost back into your presence. In the name of Jesus. Father, as we continue with these 21 days, as we continue to seek your face, we pray for more grace to serve you. Father, we declare and decree that if there is any agent of evil monitoring us, maybe connecting with us, Lord, deliver that person and save them. Save him or save her. Such that whatever they do will not alight and will not affect us, Lord. Send your angels tonight. The angel that went over watching over Joseph until Joseph became a governor in Egypt. Lord, I need that angel. We need that angel. Lord, send us the angels that led the children of Israel from Egypt into their promised land. We need angels that don't give up. We pray tonight that you send your angels on this woman's house. On this man's house, on my own house, I need your angels, Lord. Father, tonight, we also pray in the name of Jesus that you send angels that hold the hands. In Psalms 91, the Bible says that you will command your angels to hold our hands, that our feet will not be struck on any stone. Lord, we need your angels. To hold our hands left and right. Many of us are nearly are almost giving up. Many members of this ministry are almost giving up, Lord, and other churches. But Lord, restore our strength and send your angel to encourage us. In Daniel chapter 10, the Bible says that when they saw the angel, he lost strength. But the Bible says that he touched you, the angel touched Daniel and he gained strength. Lord, send your angel to touch me, to impart in me the anointing and the power to resurrect. The anointing and the power to win in the name of Jesus. Dear Holy Spirit, sometimes what we see is not what we believe will happen. But dear Holy Spirit, you know the secrets. You are an intercessor. You intercede on our behalf. I pray for all of us, Lord, that dear Holy Spirit, intercede on our behalf. 
such that our children will not be defiled. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, tonight I pray for the mothers that are expecting. We pray for that gift of the womb. And Lord, I pray that no weapon fashioned against that baby can ever prosper. Lord, we cover those children with the precious blood of Jesus as they are born. Let the protection that was upon Jesus Christ be upon that girl, be upon that boy, and be upon the mother who is about to deliver. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, tonight, continue to protect us from the attack of the enemy, protect us from accidents, protect us from any kind of failure. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, we pray for the economy. We have announced several announcements that it looks like the economy is going to crash. But Lord, we are here. We therefore pray that that will not come to pass. Give wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to those who are in charge of the economy. The church's economy is so low, which is why they are closing many churches, Lord. It is my prayer and my petition that you send your angels, Lord, to provide. Open the windows of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, tonight I pray for myself. Come on, lift up your voice and pray for yourself now. I pray for spiritual strength. I pray for physical strength. I pray for healing upon my life. I pray for breakthrough in whatever we lay our hands upon. I pray for financial blessings, Lord, for me and for every member of this altar. Financial breakthrough is what we prophesy tonight in the name that is above all names. The name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, we know that sometimes people lose strength and hope that they stop praying and connecting. But I pray for whoever is on this altar tonight. Lord, bless them and protect them. Cover them with the precious blood of Jesus and never allow them to fall away in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you send your angel. The same angel you sent in Esther's scenario. And it turned the tables. According to Esther chapter number 9, the Bible says that they, the enemies of the Jews, had planned to overpower them. God turned the tables. Quite the opposite happened. I pray tonight that quite the opposite will happen. Whatever our enemies expected us to fall into, we shall not fall into them, but we shall overcome. Father, we pray that you mold us. You created us. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter number one, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. And the, world, the earth was without form, and darkness had hovered upon the land. But then the Lord said, let there be light, after the Holy Spirit had hovered. And the Bible says the light was there. Tonight, Lord, we are in a mess. Our families have been messed up. Our incomes have been messed up. Our destinies have been messed up. Some people are so messed up that they don't want any news, whether bad or good. Lord, I pray for deliverance this evening. In the name of Jesus, deliver us. Father, today let it be be the day that we had in, uh, tough encounters. Let the, let the rest of the day of this week be days of good news and glad tidings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Tonight I want to thank you and as we share the word, help that man that is depressed and stressed. Help that woman in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. Father, I pray that you have your way in our lives. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless us, continue to bless every man, every woman on this line, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And someone said, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, to the glory of God. Someone say, Amen and Amen. This evening I welcome you first of all from the long journey of prayer and fasting. Some people were at work, and yet they still prayed. They still fasted. May God give us more grace to fast, 
and to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Secondly, I want to thank you so much for giving. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving. What you give, you might think it is little, but it makes a very big difference. Hallelujah. It makes a very big difference in our lives. And so tonight I, I continue to encourage you that please continue to give. Let us go straight into the word of God. Hallelujah. At least I will read one of those verses we have shared and then go to new verses. Let us start with the verse of the day which is Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Makorobo Shenda Baba. Psalms 103, verse number 20, please. This is what the Bible says. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. To expand a bit, this is a scripture that explains what the function of, one of the functions, or some of the functions of angels, what, are they, what they do and what they are expected to do. Angels should never be worshipped. Because I'm going to share more about angels and how you can command angels to go out and get what you cannot get. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible said, you angels, number one, you must praise your God. Praise the Lord, you his angels. Angels worship. We see that in Isaiah chapter number six. Praise the name of the Lord. They worshiped. They were so uh, worshipping to a point that there was a great shaking. That is their work. Let us look at Isaiah chapter number 6, please. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter number 6, this is Isaiah's commission. Before he was commissioned to be a minister, before Isaiah was commissioned to be anointed, the, or he was anointed, this is what the Bible says. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. Now they are describing how angels look like. With the two wings they covered their faces. Why? Because they were in the presence of God. With the two they covered their feet. They don't want to be naked. And with the two they were flying and they were calling to one another holy 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 is the lord almighty the whole earth is full of his glory at the sound of their voices the doorposts and the thresholds shook, shook and the temple was filled with the smoke praise the name of the lord this is a scenario that happened in isaiah's time of calling God wanted to prove Isaiah that, look, I am so mighty that what the angels that help you to fight for you are actually my servants. They should also thank me for creating them and for giving them an assignment. Praise the name of the Lord. So allow me to make this clear. It would not be a break of doctrine. If we announce that we have angels around us, according to Psalm 34, verse number 7, we have read that severally. And it says that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord. We have evidence now, based on the scriptures, that where a child of God is, there are some angels moving around to protect me, to protect you, to provide for you. God sends his angels to fight battles for his children. God sends his angels 
to open prison gates. Praise the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. When we look at the book of um, Acts of Apostles, chapter number 12, we say, the Bible says, And behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared, and a light shone in the cell, and struck Peter's side, and woke him up, saying, Get up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Guard yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and continued to follow the angel. He did not know that was being done by, an, by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. In other words, when the angels begin to work in your life, it is going to look like a dream. Please mark this. It is going to look like a dream. It could as well look like a vision, as if you, something is being revealed to you. Every one of us has had moments where you passed a place and you did not know you were passing there. And yet you pass there, especially those who drive. We drive past places without realizing we have passed. Sometimes even the way we drive, it is because of the angels of the Lord that have been protecting us. Peter was in prison. In other words, let me expand it by saying, Peter might have been in a situation that is like yours. For him it was a physical prison. But for every one of us, there are different prisons. Someone said, Dear Heavenly Father, send your angels to release me and take me out of this prison. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes people have financial prisons. When you look at your lineage from your family, you know that you know that you know. In your family, nobody can get beyond 10 million. The day you get such 10 million, according to the history and the testimonies give, people give, you get stroke, you get sickness, you die. I used to have a friend that told me in their family, his father died at 40. Many of his relatives, I think, died at that. So when he clicked 40, he said, I think I'm also going. What is the need to do A, B, C, D? Praise the name of the Lord. In other words, it is my prayer that you will learn and understand that the angels are around us. But now, we have gone to a point where we need to pray tonight that God will teach us the language of heaven. How does that come? The Holy Spirit fills us with His Holy Spirit. The Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, fills us with His Holy Spirit. And that His Spirit opens our understanding, opens our knowledge of who God is. In fact, He empowers us to go and act on God's behalf. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 20, the Bible says, we are there for Christ's ambassadors, as if though Christ was bleeding through us. In other words, you and I are the ambassadors of heaven, the ambassador of God, the ambassador of hope, the ambassadors of love, God's love. And that means any time things happen otherwise, the angels of God are there to protect. Do we need more scriptures? Yes, we do. Praise the name of the Lord. We saw in Daniel chapter number 10 that we read recently, that we started with under our main scripture. The Bible says this. Praise the name of the Lord. We are in Daniel chapter number 10. The Bible says this. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belshazzar. Its message was true. 
and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks the same thing we are doing. Praise the name of the Lord. What happened? I ate no choice food, no meat or wine, touched my lips, and I used no lotions all until the three weeks were over. He's explaining his preparation to win. If we are going to enjoy the ministry of angels, there will be a moment to prepare ourselves. Prepare our minds for action. Get ready because now that you are in the presence of God, God is about to do something new. Someone said, Dear Heavenly Father, do something new in my life. Every time we pray to God, it means He's going to send His angels, His messengers, to serve us. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, send me guiding angels. Send me angels that protect your saints. Send me angels, Lord, that are in charge of protecting families in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Pride these days have taken over people thinking that, oh, I have everything I want. Therefore, I don't need to pray. I'll never forget one of the brothers. He's now back in Uganda, I believe. He attended our church and later on they got a very big flood. And they started looking after children. But before they did, I used to call him when we stood, uh, when I was praying for the service in front. And I said, please, come and join us. One day he laughed and said, Pastor, for me I don't pray anymore. I just thank God, I don't need anymore. No, we do. If you have all the money you need, you need the angels of God to protect you. Because they are the army next to our army. We are two armies at least, but there are other armies. Pastor, how do you know that? All the armies that God sends to destroy things. Even sickness can be an army. When you look at the book of Joel, Joel chapter number 2, when we say, when we see some, such scriptures, sometimes we don't think war. But now, me, I have learned to think like a warrior. I've learned to think like a person that fights. I'm not about to give up. Every time I feel weak, I call for angels and I say, angels of God, intervene now because I need you. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, in the book of Joel, Joel chapter number 2, bear with me when I'm opening my Bibles, I've, my Bibles, I've torn almost every Bible now. Praise the name of the Lord. Almost every Bible is torn. Joel chapter 2. Let me read it from verse. Let me read the first of all, verse number 25. I will repay you. Um, let us go back. Okay. 25. I'll repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. What locusts? Where did they come from? The great locusts and the young locusts. The other locusts and the locust swarm. Listen to this. My great army that I sent among you. In other words, God has come back to say, now I'm going to deliver you. Because I had sent an army, you cannot shoot with guns. Sometimes we see in countries where we come from. And some people are so proud because they have a gun. Can you shoot bees or locusts when they come? Can you get a gun and shoot one by one? No. That's why God says, don't worry, I'm going to repay what the locusts ate. But I want you to know that that was my great army. Now we have the great army of angels that can even defeat and fight against locusts. You are a child of God. You have angels around you. You have angels that are in charge of replacing what you have lost. You are a child of God that is supposed to claim for what belongs to you. When we first had our ba first baby in this house, it took us six months to register for child benefit, they call it. 
by then, I don't know how much it is now, but all the children, I think, who are not yet 16 or 18, have to get some amount of money. By then, it was 20 pounds. I was financially struggling. I needed the 20 pounds at least to help us buy pampers and food because I had just gotten papers. I was not well. We were really, really struggling. But as we are talking about ABC, one of the, uh, the, the ladies advised and said, have you applied for child benefit? I said, what is child benefit? And I'm, telling, I'm going to tell you why I gave you this example. She explained to us, we filled in the form, and we started getting 20 pounds every week, which helped to buy food for the baby. Why did I tell you this? That when you're a child of God, there are many benefits. We start with the prayer when we come here, but the rest of the time, I always want to share, so that our eyes will open, and we understand that there are more benefits for us than we know of. Did you know, my dear sister, did you know, my dear brother, that there are many benefits that you have never even accessed in the presence of God than there are outside there? That the moment I become a child of God, I can actually use that right to command battles to stop. I can command the angels to go and fight on my behalf. Throughout the Bible, we see the ministry of angels at work. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, my great army, I sent them. When God is the one who has sent a great army of locusts, I think it is better you ask him to send his angels to fight than saying, I command those bees to go. I command those uh, uh, locusts to go. There are sometimes when we pray a prayer, and for sure, whatever we are praying is not making any sense. Why? Because God is still holding. So for us to get the ministry of angels, we have to be right, standing right with God. How do we stand right with God? We obey his word. How do I obey his word? I learn the, the language of heaven. How do I learn the language of heaven? I allow the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit from heaven to fill me. When the Spirit fills me, he gives me the ability to do what I could not do. To see what I could not see. When you go to the book of Isaiah, it talks about linguistics. Praise the name of the Lord. And I will explain why I use that. You see, one of my qualifications that I have is a degree in teaching English as a foreign language. Now, that means, what that means is that I might not be as fluent as some people think. But I know the principles of learning a language. Praise the name of the Lord. And Isaiah here, chapter number 50, verse number 4, this is what the Bible says. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He awake, awakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. In other words, I have to come to a point where I understand the language of God. The only way I can do that is if I have the Spirit of God, who is also called the Holy Spirit in me. If you didn't know how to preach, but God gave you part of my spirit in you, you would preach exactly the way I'm doing. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything you do will be like the one I do. Why? Because you are filled with my spirit. So when believers are filled with the Holy Spirit, they become like God. When God speaks, they can understand. One of the deep secrets that I want us to pick from this altar is simple. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
such that you can learn and understand the language of heaven. That sometimes what we see with our eyes is actually not what it is. Here he said, the sovereign Lord has, has given me a tongue, a well-instructed tongue, to know the word that sustains the weary. I know the word that sustains the weary. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord has given me the tongue of the land. How has he given it to me? He has filled me with the Holy Spirit. Say, dear Holy Spirit, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So if I want to understand how angels minister in my life, it is not just going to come because I prayed. It is going to call upon your commitment to prayer. Decide not to miss any altar for a month and see what will happen. You just make up your mind and decide. I am not going to miss any altar unless it, unless it is in, in, inevitable. And that's what I'm going to do. People of God, when you do it, you will be amazed with the, the, the results. I was a very quiet man. But the moment I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I was able to stand and preach. I know my voice will be audible. Apart from the enemy that fights here and there and, and, and brings all those accusations, I know that I know that I know I listen to the Holy Spirit and He guides me. Someone said, Dear Holy Spirit, give me the grace to understand your instructions. Here, Isaiah in chapter number 50, Isaiah is testifying. We started in Isaiah chapter number 6, he says, I'm undone. I'm a man that has got very dirty mouth. What has happened? He, he was a person that could not understand the language of heaven. He probably spoke anyhow. Whatever he heard, he told the people. Have you heard the people that say, oh, God told me. And God has not even spoken to them for ages. Has it happened to all of us? Many of us. We have thought that our thoughts are the thoughts of God. But when you go to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55 from verse number 7. Let the wicked forsake their ways. And the unrighteous their thought. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God for he will free pardon. Listen to verse number 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So, we will need the Holy Spirit to fill us, such that our thoughts will become like the thoughts of God. Because the angels that are sent to meet me, or to meet you, actually have the same thinking as the one that has sent them. The one that has sent them is the God, the creator of the universe. is a gentle God. Angels are gentle. When they are sent to destroy, they will do it faithfully. Because the angels are an, an army. We have the army we read about in Joel chapter number 2. There is a human army. You and I are the army of the Lord in this first heaven that are supposed to fight spiritual battles. If we don't fight in this first heaven, there are witches and wizards that are ready to take whatever belongs to us. Someone said, God forbid. Praise the name of the Lord. God forbid. That is why, because you are an army, and God wants you to understand the language of heaven, there are many things he does. But quickly, let us go to Psalms 144, verse number 1. Psalms 144, verse number 1 says, Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. What is doing to us right now? Through his word, he's training us for war. He's saying when you go to fight or when people attack you, remember you can fight because you have the authority. But if you can't, invite angels of God to fight that battle for you, to destroy that shrine that has been trying to hold you back. That is how we overcome. That is how we win. The language we speak, understanding the type of army, on this earth here where we are, angels cannot live everywhere unless they have been assigned to come 
and do something. But we are the ones that are legally allowed to stay here. That's why you can command demons of the dead people. You dream about demons, you have demons, people send demons to you, they send curses. Why do you have the authority? There are many reasons. One of, all, one of them is because John chapter 1 has already told us, verse number 12, that those who believed in Jesus Christ and accepted him were given the right to become children of God. That is reason enough. But there is another reason. Because we have been created in the book of Genesis to have dominion, to rule, we are the rulers of this what? This part of the, the, the creation. We are in charge. How are you in charge? When you are in charge, you must know where your strongest, strongest man, men are. I think in Uganda we have different types of army. And those in charge of the authority in this country, they know which battalion must be alert. They know where their SFC is. They know where their military is. As a child of God, you must know where is the army that fights with me. Instead of looking for people who love you so much, sometimes they let you down, but you give them all the information. I sent a message on the altar that warned us not to share everything we have or we know or we are going to do. Why is that? Because we are an army. When we fail, the kingdom of God is challenged. That's why you see we have a backup army called the angel the angelic hosts they are ready to fight praise the name of the lord when god created man he gave us listen to verse number uh, genesis chapter number one from verse number 26 then god said let us make man kind in our image in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all over all, all over wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground verse 27 so god created mankind in his own image in the image of god he created them male and female he created them god blessed them and said to them be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue it Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves in the ground. In other words, we are here to rule. Woman of God, you cannot afford to give up. That is why Joseph, no matter how much his brothers tried, the man did not give up. Until in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, he says, as you my brothers... You did this because he wanted to harm me. But God had a better plan. He did not want to harm me. He wanted to do good to me. Why? Such that I can help other people who are struggling, as you have seen. Woman of God, we don't have time to give up. Man of God, no time to give up. But we must understand the language of heaven. How? We must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to give us the tongue of the land the tongue of those who are filled with the Holy Spirit, such that when the situation rises up, they will stand and say, I rebuke you, evil spirit, in the name of Jesus. Let that woman go right now, in the name of Jesus. And the people around will look at you and say, hey, how can he command demons? Can he see them? No. But what they don't know is that you are operating at another level. We rule together with Christ in heavenly places. What that means that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you walk with authority. You are authoritative. The word of God gives you authority. So you can command sickness and disease. So the angels are part of us. They are spiritual beings. They are divine beings. We are physical beings. But when we are fighting spiritual warfare, we are together. It is the army of God, the angels, that come to back us up and we win battles. Say, dear Holy Spirit, send your angels to back me up in this battle. I see many people with battles. But now you are clearly starting to see. You are starting to clearly see sometimes why we have failed in spiritual warfare. Why? 
because sometimes we don't know how to pray. That's what Jesus said. You pray, you don't know how to pray. Sometimes you pray so that you get things and use them for your own benefit. Joseph said, no, 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 no. I prayed and God helped me because he knew my victory was going to help everyone including you as you have seen today. Align yourself. Let us align ourselves in the word of God. Align ourselves in the will of God. Align ourselves in the position where the Holy Spirit can fill us. The angels of God, sent by God himself, are able to defeat that court case. They are able to challenge, even if it means one of the judges to fall sick. And they put another one that will favor you. That will happen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I want to thank you for tonight. I want to thank you because you have blessed us. And Lord, as we continue to seek your face, I pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, so that we understand instructions when angels instruct us, so that we understand the language of heaven, so that when they come to fight for us, we will know exactly why they are here and what they can do. Lord, I bless your daughters and your sons, and I bless your holy name and your presence, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to dwell in your presence. Father, if anybody did not understand the word today, dear Holy Spirit, I pray that you help every one of us interpret it well, understand it well, that it shall not be changed, but instead it will be healing to us. We pray for the altar tomorrow, in the name of Jesus, as we gather tomorrow, Father, it's my prayer and my petition that the service in the morning glory, the service at lunch hour, and in the evening glory will be power-packed, filled with the Holy Spirit. I know that I know that I know that this is the beginning of our victory. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Please share this link because you can retrieve this message. If you didn't get it well, tune it again and listen to it again and again. And you understand that, until you understand that you are not alone in this battle, but God is on your side. There are angels, patrols of angels surrounding you. And that you are not going to fail. You are not going to be put to shame. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens us in Jesus' name. Have a good night. See you in the morning during lunch hour at 6 a.m. in the morning in Uganda. 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. in Uganda lunch hour service. And the evening glory from 6.30 to 7.30. We love you. God bless you. And if you have the grace to give, please give as the Lord guides you. Because your giving is what supports us. You are blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.